Back to 1984 once more for this week's episode for a look at the original Autobot tough guy who believed in might over microchips. These are the basics on Brawn. The original Brawn toy was one of the small-scale Autobot mini-vehicles and transformed into an off-road SUV. The figure was first released in Japan in 1983 as part of the MicroChange toy line, but evidence suggests it was originally designed by American toy makers Knickerbocker for their unproduced 1983 toy line Mysterians, which had been cancelled when the company was acquired by Hasbro. But whether imported from Japan or obtained from Knickerbocker, the toy was released by Hasbro in the first year of the Transformers line in 1984. A profile was written for Braun by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky, which characterized him as the Autobots' demolition specialist, who was one of the strongest and most durable among them despite his small size. Hardy and determined, Braun loved the challenges posed by Earth's rugged terrain, but he could be a bit of a macho meathead, dismissive of those who preferred thinking to fighting. Braun was one of the more prominent Autobot characters in the first season of the Transformers cartoon, with large roles in several episodes. He teamed up with Wind Charger to investigate Decepticon activity in the Andes Mountains, travelled to Cybertron to rescue captured human ally Sparkplug Woodwicky, and tackled the Insecticons in Bali. The continued availability of his toy in 1985 ensured that Braun remained part of the show's cast in its second season. Though not as major a character, he did star in another Spotlight episode, in which his disdain for intellectuals saw him butt heads with Autobot scientist Perceptor, until Perceptor won him over by saving the Autobots from a super-powered Megatron, convincing Braun that brains could be just as important as muscles. Being small didn't stop Braun picking big fights. During his appearances in the series, he repeatedly went up against Soundwave, and once even shot Megatron with his own cannon, all while dropping macho action movie one-liners delivered with aplomb by actor Corey Burton. Take them. I don't take so easy. Conversely, Braun did very little in the Marvel comic book published in America, but he did enjoy a starring role in one of the earliest exclusive stories written for the United Kingdom's version of the series, in which his mind was scrambled by an electric shock and he turned against the Autobots, going on a rampage trying to free human cars from their owners until he was brought back under control. After Braun's toy was discontinued in 1986, he was phased out of both the cartoon and the comic. In the cartoon universe, he was famously killed off in The Transformers The Movie, the first of the film's many casualties, gunned down by Starscream wielding Megatron. Though the fact that such a tough character was killed so quickly and easily did wind up spawning a long-running fandom in-joke about how there was no way he was really dead. In the comic, meanwhile, Braun was one of a group of Autobots offline by a Decepticon-controlled copy of Optimus Prime. He was restored to life a few years later, just in time to be deactivated again by a cosmically-powered Starscream. He was revived again by the time of the 1993 sequel comic, Generation 2, but was then atomized by a rebuilt, powered-up Megatron. After that, it would be some time before the name Brawn was heard in Transformers again. But as the 21st century began, new incarnations of the character began to appear in new series. Some of them quite different in appearance, but all of them with pretty much the same rough-and-tumble, muscle-head personality as the original. The first was in 2001's Robots in Disguise. This version of the character transformed into a Mercedes-Benz ML320 SUV, and was named x Braun because, well, Hasbro just thought that adding an X to his name made him sound cooler. 
Exbron was the eldest of the three Autobot brothers featured in the series, who were all part of an undercover Autobot team posing as ordinary vehicles on Earth. Exbron often masqueraded as an SUV owned by an unlucky human named Kelly. Now, this series was created in Japan, and there, Exbron was conceived as a new character named Wild Ride. But when Hasbro imported the series, they renamed him, and it's easy to see why. As a strong-armed bot who loved the rough terrain of Earth, he had a lot in common with the original Braun, though the English version of the show added a further twist to the character, playing him as a rambunctious cowboy. Alright Wranglers, hit him up and move him out! Corey Burton returned to voice the Transformers animated version of Braun, who appeared in the cartoon's third season premiere in 2009 as a member of the Autobots Team Athenia, defending a space bridge outpost against the Decepticons Team Char. Braun joined the world of the live-action movies in 2010 as part of the Revenge of the Fallen toyline, sporting a Hummer-style SUV alternate mode. This incarnation of the character didn't appear in the films themselves, but would feature in various tie-in comics around the world as one of the many Autobots working alongside the human forces of Nest. The original Braun, meanwhile, has continued to appear in media like comic books and mobile games fairly regularly, though he's never again been as notable a character as he was back in the original cartoon. Still, he has enjoyed some standout moments here and there like going up against Decepticon combiner Bruticus in Dreamwave Productions comic books, beating up Starscream in IDW Publishing's comic books, and in an especially unusual appearance in 2013's Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, falling in love with and marrying G.I. Joe cover girl, and even using techno-organic technology to conceive a child with her. Various new toys of Braun have also been released over the years, starting in Transformers Universe in 2008. A much larger figure, a retool of Transformers Prime Bulkhead, was planned for release in the Transformers Generations line in 2012, but was cancelled. It would instead eventually be made available in 2014 as part of the Japanese exclusive Transformers Cloud line representing a version of Braun from a universe where the Autobots were the guardians of the multiverse, where Braun was badly damaged in battle with Starscream and upgraded into this huge new form by the vast powers of the multiversal entity, Sara. Surprisingly, two separate Braun toys were released in 2016's Titan's Return line. The first was a tiny Titan Master, which transformed into Braun's head and could connect to larger figures released in the series, and which came with a miniature battle mech that triple changed from SUV to hoverbike to rifle for other toys to wield. While the second was a more traditional figure, which included a cockpit in which the Titan Master could ride. When these figures were released in Japan in 2017, they earned Braun an appearance in the Transformers Legends manga, a comedic comic that told the story of how Braun had been reduced to a Titan Master after being caught in the explosion of a black hole, and now had to resort to using a replica of his original body that he piloted like a mecha. Braun's most recent notable appearance was a brief but memorable cameo in 2018's Bumblebee movie, fighting in the final battle of the War on Cybertron. He appeared in the film with a new design based directly on his classic Generation 1 look, a toy of which would later be released in the Studio Series line in 2022, complete with a drill accessory used by Braun in a few episodes of the original cartoon and he would also appear in a motion comic included as an extra on the movie Blu-ray, fighting his old enemy Soundwave on Earth. Responsible for suddenly propelling the tiny but mighty Autobot back into the spotlight, this new cinematic appearance was small but significant, two words that describe a bot like Braun perfectly. And those are the basics on Brawn. If you've enjoyed this journey through Transformers history and lore, give the like button a click and subscribe for lots, lots more. You can help support the series if you visit Patreon, where you'll get early access to new episodes. 